Now it's time to talk about insurance. Now Ghana's insurance penetration rate has dropped to 1% from the previous rate of 1.12%. Now this is captured in the 2018 report of the National Insurance Commission. Now the new rate includes both life and non-life insurance. And TV3 uh, you know, had a story on it. And so I want you to quickly take a look at that before I introduce my guest to you and start the conversation. The reduction of the insurance penetration rate last year occurred despite the 21% growth in the industry's gross written premiums. The NIC has blamed the reduction in the figures to the rebasing of the economy. According to NIC's 2018 report on the insurance industry, only 30% of Ghanaians have insurance cover. The report also revealed that 28 non-life insurance companies, two life insurance companies, 23 insurance brokers, were sanctioned for various infractions in 2018. With the minimum capital requirement for insurance companies in the country increased from 15 million CDs to 50 million CDs, Deputy Commissioner at the National Insurance Commission, Kofi Ando, hopes the penetration rate will increase. All right, so yes, that was our report on this particular issue. And in the studios, I have with me Mr. Chris Brady Mensah. He's the CEO for Serene Insurance Company Limited. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on the new day. And I'm sure this report is not new to you. You probably might have gone through um, extensively. But first of all, it says that there has been a decline, um, you know, in the penetration rates. What do you think could have accounted for this? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, good morning to your viewers. Uh, the decline of insurance penetration Already, it's a very low yeah. the standard we have. And if there's a decline, yes, I've, I've read the National Insurance Commission report, report yeah. for 2018. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a decline of about points one Point or something, yeah. Uh -huh. around that figure. And the reason, sorry about the that. Reason, <laughs> the reason could be, for me, about three factors. Okay. One. Uh, low deployment uh, mm. income of okay. our people to uh, poor public perception about insurance. Mm. And the third one is the low capacity of the insurance sector. Low capacity. This, yeah, this can be the three things mm. that has maybe brought this thing. Can, you, can you elaborate? Yeah. Maybe the low uh, deployment but uh, income of their people. Okay. You will look, insurance or insurers have a, this statement mm -hmm. that says that insurance is being uh, sold, not bought. Yeah. You know, this statement uh, has a lot of implications. Implications it does. Yeah, in our insurance business. What it therefore means is that ordinary people will not go to purchase an insurance policy. Mm -hmm. You and I know. I don't even know your vehicle or whatever. Oh, I house. haven't showed it. Hey, I don't want to be. Do you have uh, an insurance on your house? Yes. You do? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really good. Mm -hmm. You know? So, people really, insurance will be the last thing that people actually think about. Yeah. You know? That, oh, you know? And because of, relatively, because of the low income level that we have, you know, people will not, individuals will not prioritize insurance as one of the items that mm -hmm. they will purchase when it comes to insurance. Yeah. And this is where maybe the regulator comes in. Okay. More education on this angle mm. to encourage people the importance and the reason why people should actually go for an insurance cover. So these are the things. That's mm. the first thing I think, in my opinion, okay. that we must work on it. And then you can talk about the, the poor perception about insurance. Uh, or the poor perception of the public, of the public on yeah. insurance matters. You know, this is due to the delays in payments, you know, and also uh, delays in payments and also uh, maybe repudiation of legitimate claims okay. that insurance are supposed to pay it mm. and they are not paying. Hmm. And then the public have lost trust in us and we as insurers will have to also improve that angle. Yeah. And that will help the penetration level somehow mm. and then we'll talk about the capacity yeah you know uh that's where maybe the minimum capital will come in because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. i was going to ask you about <laughs> it's been almost like what a 300 percent uh, increment in yeah, that in that yeah so when you look at the capacity let's take our oil and gas industry for Great. instance mm -hmm. 
how many of this premium that we retain Would, as a country yeah. as insurers? You know, pretty it's something it's small. small, yeah. Because we end up seeding all the business overseas. Yeah. You know, and this is because maybe our capacity is not the same. And it's also boiled down to the kind of asset level that we have as an, an industry. Mm. When you look at Africa in general, you will realize that our uh, asset level is really low, just mm. about 5%. Mm. You know, and that is also not helping. So with the commission coming up with this minimum uh, review of the minimum capital and all that. I think it's going to help our industry. You think it would help? It will help our but industry. But you also talked about the fact that, you know, when it comes to, let's say, the oil and gas industry like this, it looks like more of the foreign mm. uh, insurers are able to handle the, the capacity mm. as, as uh, you know, um, compared to the local ones. Mm. There's been a call for partnerships. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that should still carry on? Because people are saying that instead of having these foreign companies just come and take the chunk of the money, uh, maybe they should partner with the local ones because that's also going to help the, the local ones also grow as well and it will help with the um, you know, penetration. Yeah, I believe in that. Mm. I said the other day, insurance is a, a spread of a risk. Yeah. We are going to share a business. Mm. I'm at, I have a retention level that I will be able to comfortably take and that my reinsurance will support. Mm. But if you don't have the capacity to do this, how are you going to share the business? Mm. At the end of the day, you will realize that if you are talking about $100 million, Maybe we are only, I'm getting, maybe Syrian is taking maybe a, a million dollars or something. Yeah. How much would that be? We are only 28 non-life insurance, insurance companies. Yeah. You know, so you realize that, you know, still we need to actually build the capacity to actually share this business with hmm. other people. Yeah, that is the Interesting. Maybe the problem we have. There's also another part that says that there's been a 21% growth in the industry's gross written premiums, yet there's a decline. <laughs> you know, you talked about all the factors that could have led uh, to it, but mm -hmm. I, I think you didn't mention this as well. What do you think? Because if there's been a growth rate, you're expecting that then it will grow as well, um, you know, for the insurance penetration, but that's not the case. I've been in this industry for the past 17 years. Okay there has always been a consistent growth in terms of premium income mm. in our industry. Mm -hmm. 2017, it was about, 2017, it was about 26% um, growth. Okay. There's a decline of about 4% in 2018. Mm. That's where we are having maybe the 21% mm -hmm. that we are seeing in the National Insurance Commission annual reports. Yeah. Yeah, this growth has been consistent. But I don't know what actually accounted for the decline because Ordinary one, there's a growth. There should be. There should be, you know, yeah. an increase in penetration mm -hmm. and all that. But uh, I don't know. You can't, you can't tell. I can't actually tell why there's a decline in terms of penetration. It could lead to other factors that maybe we have not mentioned here, mm. you know. People have said that, you know, the health insurance has not been included in, you know, the total, um, you know, insurance penetration. Because then that way, the rates would have gone high a bit. And they've been asking because when you go to other countries, that is also passed. They are all bound together. But here, that's not the case. Yeah, other countries, it's true that uh, health insurance, even uh, SNIT, mm. you know, national all health that insurance, is included. They are all yeah. included. When that comes to play, you know, maybe the penetration level will go up from the one point something that we have today. Would it even go maybe beyond to two? Maybe, even if it's three or five or ten, it's not bad. It's yeah. still low. We know we need to do more because with that insurance, our business cuts across every industry, mm. every industry, even including the media and all that. Yeah. So we must do more as industry, you know, to actually increase the penetration level mm. in our industry. So the NIC is saying that they are hoping that they can increase the rate, the penetration rate from 2% to, let's say, like, what, 6% by 2020. Is this possible? It's possible, but it it's, it requires a lot of a work, a lot of education to the public. Because the insurance public, most of them are doing these things because they are compared to do them. You know, mm. because I think that the other way of increasing penetration, yeah. which the NIC itself has alluded to, could be one. You know, the compulsory insurance that we have. Yeah. You yeah. Know, we can talk about the group life. Mm -hmm. We can talk about uh, work my compensation. We can talk about uh, public liabilities. We can talk about uh, uh, we can talk about any other yeah. policy that is compulsory, motor insurance and all and that. And all that, yeah. You will realize that most of these things I don't even know. Let's take TV three for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, the law says that 
every organization that has more than four employees should have a group life. Mm. I don't know if TV3 have that. We do. If I'm very it. sure of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we do. <laughs> if you have it, then that is really good. These are some of the things that we need to do as an industry mm. and as a country to increase the penetration level. Because okay. if every organization is doing uh, a group life, doing work my compensation, doing uh, professional indemnities, we'll go to Kule, we'll go hmm. to Confanochi, go to all the teaching hospitals, you will realize that these professionals, maybe they don't even have a cover. Exactly. In terms of their negligence, what happened? Mm -hmm. Go to the engineering field, go to the accountancy, the law firms, maybe they don't even have this professional indemnity covered you know but if we can enforce these things it will enable the industry to grow mm. what it means is that penetration level will actually go high yeah you know that so we need a lot of education on that especially yeah, we right really here need education yeah. both the industry players and the, maybe and the, the regulator as need well to do this okay to all right well i hope you've heard that as well and i've been speaking to chris brady mensa he's the ceo for serene insurance company limited we're hoping to hear better figures um <laughs> along the line hopefully by 2020 we'll get to six percent yeah hopefully. I, fingers crossed I, I really believe that the industry will We'll you know, it, it will grow. It will? Because, yeah, yeah, it will. Grow. Okay. All right. We believe that industry will grow. And this is where we wrap up on our insurance uh, conversation. And, yes, you can check 3news.com um, if you want more information about this report as well.